Hey there guys, so I want to welcome you as always to today's live stream, our midweek live stream. So before I get started, as always, I do want to mention my website. It's bponlinefitness.com. So I got it here at the bottom. And on my website, you can find a ton of information, free resources, free fitness blog that I have where you can look at various fitness topics that I discussed. Um, as well as watch the latest live stream that's posted on the home page. You can actually see that on the website as well. And then you can sign up for the email newsletter that I send out weekly. So definitely check that out. You can learn more about online coaching, about the online coaching program in the website as well. And if you have any questions about anything, you can feel free to reach out to me and I will answer any questions that you may have as it pertains to maybe on my website or online coaching itself. Um, so with all that being said, that's all I wanted to mention before we get started. But what we're talking about today is the role of nutrition in achieving fitness goals. So it's been a little bit since I've really, I guess, talked about nutrition. And I do want to come back to this topic because it's really important and I'm going to touch on various different aspects of nutrition. We're not really going to focus on one particular thing. It's going to be a mix of talking about macronutrients, pre-workout sort of meals, post-workout meals, things of that nature as it relates to your goals. So that's what we're going to primarily be focusing on. So as I just mentioned, here's the agenda of what we're going to be talking about. Macronutrients, calorie balance, pre-workout meals, post-workout meals, hydration, supplements, and vitamins. So that is all of what we're going to discuss today. And I'm going to touch on each of these points and explain a little bit about sort of their benefits and how they relate to nutrition, whether it pertains to any particular fitness goal that you're pursuing. So the first point here is macronutrients, which is something that I do bring up pretty often because it's very essential. It's something that I talk to about my clients very often because it's one of the most important aspects of any goal, whether it be talking about muscle gain or fat loss, macronutrients play a significant role in helping you to reach your goal. So what exactly are macronutrients? Macronutrients are the three primary nutrients that provide energy, support, and various physical, physiological functions in the body. They are essential for achieving fitness goals as they play specific roles in muscle building, energy production, and overall health. So each of these macronutrients are known as protein, carbs, and fats. So there's three different macronutrients. The reason why they are called macronutrients is because they are consumed in large amounts and they're large amounts that are consumed in the body as it pertains to these nutrients. So I just mentioned that we have three. So protein is crucial for muscle repair, growth, and maintenance. Carbohydrates are the primary source of energy for the body, especially during high intensity exercise. Dietary fats are essential for hormone production, cellular function, and nutrient absorption. So each of these are essential. Now when it comes to different goals, how much of each particular nutrient is dependent on that goal? So for example, if you're somebody that's wanting to focus primarily on gaining a little bit more muscle, you want your diet to be primarily in a calorie surplus. However, there are times where you may go into a calorie deficit, which is basically talking about bulking and cutting. Now, I'm not necessarily going to talk about that today, but one of the main parts of reaching a muscle gain goal is going through a period of a caloric surplus or calorie surplus, in other words, bulking, which means that you're going to have a higher amount of calories above your normal, your maintenance calories, basically. So... When you're going through, you know, a goal that's focused on muscle gain, your protein intake is going to be primarily high, as well as your carbs and fats. They're going to be slightly high, but they're going to be a little bit balanced from your protein. Your protein intake is always going to be the highest, 
because protein, of course, is helping with muscle growth and muscle repair. Now, when you're going into, when we're talking about like fat loss, you're going to be going into a calorie deficit, which is consuming less calories or below your maintenance level, basically. So your protein intake is still going to stay high. And the reason why your protein intake is still going to stay high, even when you're in a calorie deficit, is because protein itself can help you to stay fuller longer. So that's another reason why we continue to keep a protein intake high. However, when it comes to carbs and fats, you're going to lower those slightly, but we're still going to have that high protein intake if we're still focusing on, of course, that muscle gain along with fat loss. Now, that's all dependent on your particular goal, and it can change depending on how much you need of a percentage of a specific nutrient that's going to change dependent on what you're focusing on. So just keep that in mind. But these are the three macronutrients, the protein, carbs, and fats. So caloric balance, and I sort of talked about this just a second ago. So macronutrients are the three primary nutrients that provide energy and support various physiological functions in the body. They're essential for achieving fitness goals as they play a specific role in muscle building, energy production, and overall health. So consuming carbohydrates before a workout provides your body with readily available energy in the form of glucose of fuel to fuel your muscles during exercise. Opt for complex carbohydrates such as whole grains, fruits, and vegetables, which provide sustainable energy. Energy <laughs> injury. Sustainable ener energy. Including protein in your pre-workout meal or snack helps support muscle protein synthesis and can enhance muscle repair or muscle recovery and growth. Aim for a moderate amount of protein to provide amino acids for muscle repair and maintenance. Consuming protein after workout is crucial for muscle repair and recovery. Protein provides necessary amino acids to support muscle protein synthesis, helping to rebuild and strengthen muscles damaged during exercise. Replenishing glycogen stores depleted during exercise is essential for recovering or refueling your muscles for future workouts. Consuming carbohydrates post-workout helps replenish glycogen stores and promotes recovery. So why this relates to cal caloric balance is depending on when you're consuming your meals, that's going to determine sort of how much you need of a specific nutrient. So keep that in mind. And we're going to continue to sort of expand on the topic of pre and post-workout sort of meals or nutrients themselves. So pre-workout nutrition. So when you're consuming carbohydrates before a workout, that provides your body with readily available energy and any form of glucose to fuel your muscles during exercise. So when you include protein as well in your pre-workout meal or snack, it helps support muscle protein synthesis and can enhance muscle recovery and growth. So some of the sources of a pre-workout nutrition can include lean protein, chicken, which chicken is a form of lean protein, primarily grilled chicken, fish, tofu, Greek yogurt, or protein shakes can all be great options. So you want to ensure also adequate hydration before exercise. This is essential for maintaining optimal performance and preventing dehydration. Drink water or other hydrating beverages in the hours leading up to your workout. That's something that I focus on. Um, a lot of times before I get ready for my workout, I'll usually have something that is more eating something that is more carb based. Um, usually something to that effect sort of helps you get ready for a workout. Another thing I do is pre-workout. Pre-workout is a great supplement. And depending on who you are, you don't necessarily have to take it, but it can be a great supplement that can help you sort of get ready and give you energy for your workout. So that's not something I want to necessarily discuss today, but sort of keep these nutrition points in mind for your pre-workout. So anything high protein is a great option. Having carbohydrates in your diet before doing a workout helps with energy. So keep that in mind. And of course, you want to stay hydrated. Always have water with you when you're going to your workout or before your workout. That's very important. So post-workout nutrition. So with post-workout nutrition, it's crucial. It's a crucial aspect of any fitness regimen. 
as it plays a significant role in recovery, muscle repair, and replenishing energy stores after exercise. During exercise, especially resistance training or high-intensity workouts, muscles undergo stress and damage. Post-workout nutrition provides the necessary nutrients to repair and rebuild damaged muscle fibers, aiding in muscle recovery and growth. So exercise can increase muscle protein breakdown, especially if you're in a calorie deficit or have not consumed enough protein throughout the day. Consuming protein post-workout helps minimize muscle protein breakdown and promotes muscle protein synthesis, leading to muscle repair and growth. So when we're talking about post-workout nutrition, you primarily want to focus a ton on protein. And when we're talking about protein, it's pretty much the same aspect, somewhat different in that it is helping with the muscle repair process versus pre-workout. Now, when we're focusing on sort of noticing the difference between what types of meals you should eat pre and post-workout is basically dependent on your macros, of course. So when you're focusing on a meal pre-workout, you want to focus primarily on your carbs. You want to have a little bit higher carbs because carbs are more focused on helping to give you energy. However, you do want to have a little bit of protein in there as well. Now, when it comes to post-workout, you primarily want to focus a little bit more on protein because protein is helping a ton with the muscle repair and recovery process. So sort of keep that in mind. That's the big thing. A lot of times with me, I'll always have basically a post-workout sort of shake, protein shake. That's something that I always do post-workout because that helps with the muscle recovery process. So just keep that in mind that you primarily want to have protein in your diet post-workout mostly. So the influence of hydration towards your fitness goals. So I touched a little bit on hydration when we talked a little bit about pre-workout meals and, you know, anything of that sort. So the influence of hydration towards your fitness goals. So adequate hydration supports muscle function and recovery. Water is essential for transporting nutrients to muscle cells and removing metabolic waste products. So facilitating muscle repair and growth. Maintaining hydration helps minimize muscle soreness and stiffness, allowing for quicker recovery between workouts. During exercise, the body generates heat, and sweating is the primary mechanism for dissipating this heat to prevent overheating of the body. Adequate hydration supports efficient sweating and helps regulate body temperature reducing the risk of heat-related illnesses, and allowing for sustained performance during workouts. Dehydration can lead to feelings of fatigue, low energy levels, and impaired cognitive function. Staying hydrated helps sustain energy levels, mental clarity, and focus during workouts, allowing individuals to maintain intensity and motivation to achieve fitness goals. One thing that I used to not really paying attention to as much is hydration before I really got serious, you know, with weightlifting. And as I sort of got into weightlifting routine and then becoming a personal trainer, I sort of understood, you know, the importance of hydration. And I basically track my water intake daily. Um, that's something that I, I think is important. Water intake is extremely important for all of us. You know, not just when you're focusing on a fitness goal, but overall health in general. It's very important because water does so much stuff. And of course, we all know that our bodies are primarily composed of water. And it's important because water does so much things that it can help not only during your exercise and helping you to, you know, cool you down from exercise but it's also helping sort of you know behind the scenes with all of these different processes with you know removing waste products and things of that nature so just keep that in mind i always have water with me during a workout i think it's important you do need to have water of course during your workout but you also need to keep in mind that having water intake throughout the day can also be very beneficial towards your fitness goals because you're helping your body to sort of stay in that hydrated state. So supplements, and I touched a little bit on supplements when I talked about pre-workout, um, but we're gonna touch on these a little bit here. So what I wanna talk about here is primarily what supplements are for. So supplements can play a supportive role in reaching your fitness goals, but it's important to understand 
that they are not a substitute for a balanced diet and consistent exercise regimen. So what you need to focus on when you are, you know, consuming supplements is you are using them primarily to fill a nutrition gap. So to, despite your best efforts to eat a healthy diet, it can sometimes be challenging to get all the nutrients your body needs solely from food. Supplements can help fill these nutritional gaps by providing concentrated doses of vitamins, minerals, and other essential nutrients. It can also help to enhance performance, depending on what particular supplement you're choosing, whether that be pre-workout, creatine, things of that nature. Enhancing performance. Certain supplements have been shown to enhance athletic performance by including energy or by, excuse me, by improving endurance and reducing fatigue. For example, caffeine supplements can boost energy and focus while creatine supplements may improve strength and power output during high intensity exercise. They can also help with supporting recovery. Supplements can aid in post-workout recovery by promoting muscle repair and reducing inflammation. And this is what I sort of mentioned like with, you know, like with a protein, like with protein powder or anything of that sort. Protein supplements such as whey protein or plant-based protein powders are commonly used to support muscle recovery and growth after exercise. BCAAs or branched chain amino acids, that's another supplement are also popular supplements known for their role in muscle repair and reducing exercise-induced muscle soreness. So keep that in mind. Supplements are not to sort of, you know, a replacement for your diet. They are to fill any gaps that you have. If you lack protein intake or if you need something to help enhance performance or you need something to help support your recovery, that's what supplements are primarily there for so keep that in mind that it's not to replace your diet it's not like a meal replacement or anything of that sort it is for filling the gaps in your nutrition the last point here that we're going to discuss is vitamins so vitamins can be significant towards your goal um, i actually take a multivitamin every day there's a lot of different things that i take as far as supplements and vitamins um, but I do want to touch a little bit on vitamins because they can play an impact on your fitness goal. So vitamins A, C, D, and E, along with minerals like calcium, magnesium, and zinc, are important for muscle function, repair, and growth. Vitamin D, in particular, is crucial for calcium absorption and bone health, which is essential for maintaining skeletal integrity and muscle function, especially during high-impact activities like weightlifting and running. B vitamins, including B1, thiamine, B2, riboflavin, B3, niacin, B5, penothenic acid, B6, B7, and B12, they play a key role in energy metabolism. They help convert carbohydrates, fats, and proteins from food into usable energy for exercise. Adequate intake of B vitamins can help maintain energy levels during workouts and support overall endurance. When we're talking about B vitamins, a lot of those can be, you know, considered under the sort of B complex umbrella. Regular exercise can temporarily suppress the immune system, making individuals more susceptible to illness and infections. Vitamins A, C, D, and E, along with zinc and selenium, play vital roles in supporting immune function. Ensuring adequate intake of these vitamins and minerals can help maintain a robust immune system allowing for consistent training without interruptions due to illness. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But again, you can find a lot of these supplements at various places. If you do like a specific nutrient, then of course you can find specific supplements of that specific vitamin. Um, but a lot of times with me, I just take primarily a multivitamin. Um, so that's what I primarily focus on. There's a ton of different vitamins out there that you can check out. But just keep these in mind um, that they can help with metabolism, help with bone health, bone health, calcium absorption. There's so many different things that specific vitamins do. So just keep that in mind as well. Alrighty, guys. So that's pretty much all I have for you today. I know that was probably a lot of information, but I did want to touch on a little bit about the significance of sort of nutrition as well as touching a little bit on supplements and vitamins because they are sort of in that same 
sort of umbrella under nutrition in a way. So I just wanted to touch on those as well because those can be very beneficial towards reaching your goal. Um, so again, guys, you can check out my website for more information on online fitness coaching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can send me a direct message. Um, but that's all I have for you guys. I do have another live stream that will be coming up next Wednesday where I'm going to be talking a little bit about various myths as it relates to nutrition. So that's what I'm going to touch on next week. So definitely watch for that live stream. Again, it'll be at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time unless I decide to make a change um, because I'm sort of thinking about making a change in the time that I do these streams so that it can be a little bit more accessible for people to watch. However, I still record these streams, so you can watch these at a later time. I usually post these to YouTube. You can watch these in the Facebook group as well. They'll stay there. Um, but I'm thinking about changing the time of when I'll do these streams, but I haven't fully decided because I want to find an optimal time where there can be a good amount of people to watch the streams. Um, so for the time being, we're still going to do it doing the live streams every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. But I will let you guys know if that changes in the future. But with all that being said, guys, thank you again for taking the time to watch these. If you do have the chance to share these, like this stream as well. Um, and again, this will be posted again. You can watch this stream on YouTube. It will be posted today. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But that's all I have, guys. Thank you again, and I'll see you guys in the next live stream.